Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to begin answering the question, what is state? To get started, I actually want us to focus our attention to the very bottom of this code pen that we've been working on so far. So down at the bottom, we set an interval, and then we are manually calling react-dom.render once every second. And that's what's allowing our time to update every second. Now, even though we are manually recalling this react on render function, this setup is actually not bad for rendering performance. Because React is still smart enough to perform its internal comparisons and only actually re-render the tiny parts of the DOM that actually need to be re-rendered. Now, yes, this time value is changing every second, but if you just froze time for a moment and one of these values stayed constant, I want you to think of that time value as a piece of state in our application, a piece of data. Now, if we think about it, there are tons of different types of events that could happen that could change state or that could change our app data. Now, in this example so far, the only type of event that we've accounted for is the passing of time, right? Every thousand milliseconds or every one second, that time value is going to be different. So then we are re-rendering. So in that sense, this manual approach of setting an interval of one second and re-rendering manually, this works, but what about other types of events that can change data? For example, a user could click on a button or scroll the page or type letters on their keyboard. The whole idea with React is that you and I don't want to have to babysit this render method. The whole idea behind React is that we just worry about managing our app's data or the app's state. And then as that state changes, React automatically re-renders things on its own. We don't have to keep telling it to render at the appropriate time. We just tell it to render once when the page first loads and everything beyond that is up to React. So the question becomes, how do we use state? Or how do we access state? Or how do we start working with state data? Right, you've heard me say that many times that we can store our app data in state, but how do we actually tell React to store something in its state? Well, this is where things get interesting. So right now I want you to follow along with me. Before we start using state, let's set this up so that this actually does not get called once every second. So I want you to select this React DOM.render line, the entire line, cut it into your clipboard, and then go ahead and get rid of this set interval 1000 milliseconds code. And then just paste back in your clipboard. So down in the preview area, you should still see your application, only now the time is not actually getting updated every second, right? Because we're only rendering once when the page first loads. So let's give ourselves a goal. Let's adjust our time area component so that it stores the current time in state. And then whenever we change that state value, React will just automatically re-render this for us. Let me show you how we can do this. I want you to scroll up to the very top of our code. So up at the very, very top, just add a new line and type this in with me. Const use state, and that's a lowercase u, but then an uppercase s. And let's set this to equal uppercase react dot use state. Essentially, the React library has a function named use state that lets us begin working with state data. All we're doing on this line of code is saving ourselves a bit of typing down in our actual code. Instead of having to type uppercase react dot use state, we can just say use state. If we were working on our actual personal computers instead of CodePen, we would use require or import here. But because we're in CodePen right now, this is how we would set this up. Big picture, all you need to know is we now have this special React tool or React function named useState. At this point, let's go leverage useState within our time area component. So let's find our component. Here it is, the function that we named time area. And within the body of this function, maybe on a new line right above the return line, type this in with me. We're going to call that use state function. And within these parentheses, when we're calling use state, we get to give it an initial value. 
So in the parentheses, let's just set it to the current time. So a new instance of a date object, parentheses to call that date, and then dot to locale string, parentheses to call that. Okay, now React is going to store that current time value in a memory cell, right? It's going to store that little piece of state or that little piece of data for us. Now that's great, but you and I need a way to hold on to that place where it's storing the data, right? We don't just want this to sort of float off into outer space where only React can access it. We need a way to work with it. So at the very start of this line, let's place our cursor here and I'm gonna say, const and then we can make up a constant variable name for now let's just call it time equals right so we're storing whatever use state is going to return we're storing it in this variable so that we can access it later on however use state does not just return a single entity it returns an array with two items in it the first item in the array that it returns is something that would let us access this current value this current little piece of state. And the second thing that it returns to us is a function that we can call to update the value of this little piece of state data. Let me show you what I mean. So when we say const time, we don't just want one variable. We actually want two variables. So do this with me. Get rid of the time and in its place include an empty pair of square brackets for an array. What we're doing is we're going to destructure the array that use state is returning. In these square brackets, you can make up any two variable names that you'd like to make up, but I'm going to call them the time, comma, and the second name can be set the time. Okay, so now we have these two variables. The time is how we can access the state value, and set the time is how we can update the state value from its initial value that we declared here. So let's begin by using the time, right? Within the bit of JSX that we're returning in this function, when we say the current time is, well, let's just hollow out these curly brackets, right? To do something dynamic. And now within those curly brackets, we can just say the time. Okay, now if we check the preview, you can see that things are still working. So now this is where it gets interesting. Within our time area component, we just want to wait one second and then update that piece of state data. So do this with me. Within our time area function, maybe right below this const line where we use use state, let's drop down. And this doesn't have anything to do with React. This is just general JavaScript, but we can say set timeout, parentheses to call it, and then we give it two arguments, right? A comma B. The first argument should be a function, and then the second argument is how many milliseconds you want to wait before calling this function once. So for the second argument, instead of B, we can say 1000 milliseconds. And for the first argument, instead of this placeholder A, we can just include an anonymous function. So function, parentheses, curly brackets. Within those brackets, we can drop down. And now this is where we can leverage set the time. So we just say set the time parentheses to call it and give it the new current time value. So again, that's a new instance of a date object parentheses to call that and then dot to locale string parentheses to call that. Now don't worry, in just a moment, I will explain what's going on here and how it works. But if we take a look at the preview area, you can see that once again, our time is updating every second. Let me walk through how this works. So when the page first loads and React renders time area for the first time, it's going to see use state and it's actually going to store this value in a memory cell. Then we told our code to wait one second before we call set the time, which is going to update that value in state. Now when the state of a component changes, React is going to run that component again. So that means our time area function is going to run again in response to this state changing. So yes, technically this line of code is going to run again, but React is not going to actually set this as the value again. 
React is smart enough to know that this is not the first time that we are running this, right? And it's only going to use this as the initial value that we first declared. React can keep track of the fact that this is not the first time this component is rendering. We don't need to redeclare the initial value of that piece of state data. However, it is going to run all of our other code again, and it's going to say, hey, let's wait one second and update it again. And that process is just going to repeat endlessly. And that's why we have a timer that keeps going on. Now, right away, I do want to point out that set timeout is not the most optimal or ideal way of updating something once per second like this. Don't worry, in just a couple of lessons from now, we will learn about a React tool named Use Effect, which will let us set up this timing situation in a more optimal fashion. But for now, this code definitely gets the job done. Okay, so this lesson was an example of updating state in response to the event of time passing, which admittedly maybe isn't the most crystal clear way of learning about state in React. So in our very next lesson, we're going to learn how to respond to the event of a user clicking on a button. We're going to add a brand new area and component to our page that keeps track of how many likes have been clicked. So there's going to be a button that increases the number of likes and then another button that decreases the number of likes. And we're going to store that count or that number in state. This should feel like a much more natural or practical example of why state is so great and useful. I'm looking forward to jumping into this exercise with you. So let's keep things rolling and I will see you in the next lesson. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15 hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.